We've just released an amazing new extension for VS Code that allows you to effortlessly interact with and clean up your data. It can even write code for you as you do it. Let's take a look. Data Wrangler is a free VS Code extension for exploring, analyzing, transforming, and cleaning datasets. Basically, it's a Swiss army knife for all things datasets in VS Code. Here I have a dataset of all the Airbnbs in New York area that I want to explore and see if I can find any interesting insights. Typically, you'd start off by printing your data frame and then from there, figure out what code you need to write to explore each column one at a time. As you can see, the default data frame view from the notebook isn't giving me too much information about the data set, and I can't even see all the data because it's truncated. This is a super frustrating aspect of working with data in notebooks. Normally, I need to go to research online for code snippets to examine more of the data, but with Data Wrangler, it will automatically do all of this for me. With the Data Wrangler extension installed, you'll now notice this new Open a Data Wrangler button under your cell whenever you have a data frame or data object. Selecting it will open up the data set in Data Wrangler. Note, if you have a local data file such as a CSV or Excel file, you can also right-click the file and select Open a Data Wrangler without having to go through a notebook. When you first launch Data Wrangler, they'll be put into this nice grid view of your data. It's a far cry from the default table view that you just saw earlier in the notebook. We've made Data Wrangler at its core highly performant, and you'll notice how quickly it loads even over 100,000 rows of data in just seconds. You'll also notice above each column in the data set, Data Wrangler has already calculated and provided some of the most useful and interesting statistics that data scientists look for in their data, such as missing and unique values, the frequency of values, the distribution of values, and more. So for example, we can easily see that the most common Airbnb locations are in Manhattan, followed by Brooklyn. If you wanted even more specific information about a specific column, such as maybe the average number of days in the year that an Airbnb is available with this availability 365 column, we can select it and we can see in the data summary panel on the left some more advanced statistics. So we can see the average is 141 days booked out. With this Airbnb data set though, we'll only want to look at Airbnbs that are actually being booked out by people. So we'll want to filter out all the noise of units that are improperly priced or messy data, such as the maximum here of somehow a place being available for over 365 days. To do so, we can use in the built-in filter function to filter out any Airbnbs that are available for the entire year or haven't had a single booking or negative. So to do so, we can click add filter, we can say less than, and we'll say 365. And we can also do a condition for greater than zero. And now we can see the data is filtered and this distribution looks much better. And we can see the min and max is updated as well. Once we've gotten a good initial grasp of the data, such as what the columns are, some general distributions of some of the columns in the data, I we'll want to start applying some transformations to do some cleaning on the data. When we first launched Data Wrangler, it loaded in this viewing optimized mode that we just saw. This is great for going through and quickly inspecting your data, but if we want to do some additional transformations on our data, we'll want to change Data Wrangler into editing mode. In editing mode, we can see that the UI changes a little bit, and now we can see all the built-in operations in the left-hand pane here. And this is where you'll start to see the crux of Data Wrangler and where it'll start to blow your mind. To handle the missing values in the neighborhood column that we saw earlier, we can first select it and then go into the operation panel and search for drop missing values. As we select an operation in Data Wrangler, you'll notice that not only does it provide you a git diff like experience on your data in the grid, so you can visually see exactly what is changing in your data set, with the red showing you which rows are being removed but Data Wrangler also generates you the exact Python and Pandas code required to transform that data. So rather than it being a mystery of what the tool is doing and how it got there, we give the code to provide transparency to you as a user to know that it's not doing anything weird or unexpected on your data set. And as an added benefit, this code is reusable as well. Now that we've cleaned up the neighborhood column and we can see the missing values are now removed, we also know that the price column that we saw earlier is going to be an important feature of the data set, um, since one of the most important questions people will likely ask about this data set is what factors affect the price of the Airbnb, such as neighborhood, room type, etc. But if we look at the price column in its current form, it's a nice to read string, which is great for us humans to read, but it won't be that useful or readable by machines. So we'll want to convert this column into a numeric column. Instead of having to do a bunch of find and replaces on the dollar signs, the commas, or just having to handle different lengths of strings, or even worse, dealing with regex, we can use the built-in new column by example operation. So I can search new column by example here, and we'll tell Data Wrangler that we want to interpolate based on this existing price column, and we'll also name this 
price clean. So this is the clean price column. Here I'm telling Data Wrangler that I want to extract the value 966 here. So I give an example of what I want to interpolate. I can press enter and you can see that in the first pass with just one example, Data Wrangler tries to derive the rest of the column. You can see here it actually pulls in um, some of the commas which we don't want, but the great part is we can actually modify or give it additional examples to give it a better training set of, so it knows how to interpolate the value. So I can remove this co comma, press enter to update the examples, and boom, you can see Data Wrangler work its magic to derive the rest of the columns, um, given the example we gave it and fix the commas as well. And just as importantly, with the clean and concise code that generate this. So now we've stripped out the, um, the dollar signs and the commas of the price column, we can actually now just quickly convert it into a numeric column as well. And now that you see because it is a float column, we can see the distribution of the data set. So now that the price column is clean, let's do a group buy on the neighborhood and price columns and to see the average price of an Airbnb per neighborhood. So to do so, I can just go, go back to the neighborhood group, search for group buy, and we'll want to aggregate on the price clean column that we just created. So if I move it into here, click apply. Um, but I realized that I accidentally did, I believe this as a count. I don't think this is, I don't think an average price would be 30,000. Uh, if I look back quickly, I can see I actually did it on a count. So if I want to update this, I can actually click back on a previous cleaning step and it'll bring me back to the state of what Data Wrangler was at that point. Kind of like if you were looking at a specific commit in GitHub, for example. And from this screen, we can actually do any modifications that we need. So previously, like I mentioned, we did a count, but we'll want to do a mean to get the average. So I can quickly update that here. You can see um, the data updates real time, as well as the code is updated to reflect the changes as well. And if that looks good to me, I can click update. And now we can see the average price of an Airbnb per um, region in New York. And then I can go ahead as well and go sort it as well. So I can see the most expensive um, to the least expensive. After all these changes we made to our data set, you might be thinking, isn't it dangerous for this thing to be directly transforming my data? Yes, and that's why Data Wrangler doesn't do that. When you're actually working inside Data Wrangler, it makes a copy of your data in the beginning so you can explore and apply data transformations with your heart's content without worrying about making any destructive changes to your data set even if you make a mistake as you saw I just did earlier. Now I've only gone through a fraction of all the available built-in data cleaning operations within Data Wrangler. Um, if I wanted to go through all of them, it would probably take over an hour. But once you're satisfied with the exploration and transformation you've done with your data, we can actually choose to export either the clean data set into a new file or export the Python code that we created back into our notebook with just a single click. And all the code you generate in Data Wrangler is cleaned up into a nice function and put into a new cell that is ready to execute and reuse. And because Data Wrangler is directly integrated into VS Code Notebooks, you can jump back into Data Wrangler at any time by selecting that Open in Data Wrangler button again, or this View Data icon on any subsequent data frame. And everything you just saw is available for free in the Data Wrangler extension today. You can download it by simply going to the VS Code Marketplace and searching for Data Wrangler, or clicking any of the links in the description below. And as always, happy coding.